so we're at the powerlifting meet. You know, part of the organization of it is just having a lot of help. Uh, we got about 15 uh, of our members, fighters, uh, kind of doing the spotting, uh, working concession, working the desk. Um, Jim Howell's the main coordinator, and basically he set, sets up the lifts by flights. Basically, what a flight is is a group of fighters uh, that would be on deck to lift. Um, also what goes into it, um, all the spotters, they load the weight so the uh, lifters actually don't have to load it. They can uh, transition pretty quickly uh, to the bench, to the squat, whatever the lift is. And then we have a main table that record all the records. Um, at the end of the day, they start to hand out awards depending on where people um, fell as far as uh, the places. But, uh, you know, a lot goes into it. We did some marketing. Uh, we had radio advertisement for it. Um, you know, we had to cut off a lot of people uh, for this meet. Uh, I think we capped out at 130 lifters, which is a pretty big meet. Uh, if you compare it to MMA, MMA has about, you know, 30 fighters. So, you know, you got to take care of 130 uh, lifters. That's a, that's a lot of work. And plus, a lot of these guys are doing multiple uh, lifts. Uh, so they're, they're constantly being rotated in. Uh, they're in different competitions. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of world records being broke today. This is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, powerlifting meet in the in the U.S. I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, the organization that we use is IPA. Um, you know, they, they sanction all the meets. Uh, again, just like MMA, uh, we use the ISKA in New York. Uh, here we use the IPA. So all the officials are certified. And, uh, you know, if there's a world record, it goes into the book. Um, we also have a production crew here. Uh, they do all the audio, lighting, they put up the pipe and drape. Uh, if guys want special music, you know, we, we uh, put that in. So we have entrances. Uh, I believe for the pros, we'll do a little bit differently uh, where they come in and, uh, you know, they'll have an entrance. Crowd gets into it a little bit. So that's kind of the short of it um, as far as, you know, putting an event like this together. Yeah, so we assembled uh, two, te two teams for this fight card. Syracuse Gladius, which is our upstate New York team, and Nashville Renegades um, from Tennessee. Uh, we got a little bet going on uh, with the team owner there, Ron. Uh, you know, I think there's seven fights uh, between the two teams, and uh, the winner tonight has to buy the other guys, uh, or not the winner, the loser has to buy the other guys drinks. So, um, you know, a little fun side bet, but they're all great guys. I got to meet them the other day. They showed up uh, Thursday, so they came here to train at the gym. Uh, super nice guys. Uh, I know there's a lot of yapping uh, going on between uh, Syracuse Gladius and Nashville, but at the end of the day, they're competitors, uh, and uh, should be some good fights tonight. State chapter of the International Powerlifting Association. We have uh, nationwide and worldwide competitors. We, today we had uh, 915 pound beds. We have over a thousand pound squats. We have uh, 900 plus pound deadlifts. If you're into powerlifting, you should be involved with the IPA. It's the best decision out there, and by far the best federation out there. So hopefully, look it up. It's www.ipapower.com. This is growing like crazy, so I hope everyone gets involved and we have room for everyone so you never be intimidated and everybody can do it. So at every level, every position, every ability, we have lifters from 15 years old to 77 years old today. So I hope everybody will be involved in it. And again,
and uh, it's a safe sport. There's uh, had no injuries, and uh, I think it's exciting. So check it out. Hope you visit online. Stay strong. It's been a crazy, uh, I don't know, 36 hours. Uh, did weigh-ins last night. Um, you know, came here early. Uh, did weigh-ins here. We had to set up both venues. So. A crazy uh, 36 hours. Now just uh, doing Coach Stewart's job like he does for uh, Gladys. So I'm kind of the backroom person, making sure everybody's ready. Go, Bill! Go, Bill! You're gonna what? I'm gonna attempt 500 later. It's going, it's going. Actually, I've been going back and forth uh, with Randy. He's uh, doing the operations. Melanie's on her way there. And uh, we've got a guy weighing in now. So Melanie has a scale. And he's a little irritated because he's hungry. He wants to weigh in. He couldn't weigh in last night. He didn't have a ride. You know, fight or life. You know, a lot of those guys don't have cars and cell phones. So uh, trying to get somebody over there and, and take care of him. So, I got it. I got it? She's awesome. I don't want to mess that up now. I want to make sure like, we're ready to go at like four years. She gets out of here. Dave's here for the board. I told him afterwards to come up a couple of these guys in here and go over here and break one of them spots. Live radio tonight. I'm pretty excited. I think. Possibly TV. Huh? Possibly TV. He's too good looking for TV. That's why we keep him on radio. <laughs> two events today basically what's going through my mind is you know getting the next thing done getting the next thing done uh, just taking a little break here having some pizza but uh, you know uh, the main man on this is Kevin Brady he's helping me with both events uh, you know he, he scrambled to get a lot of the input uh, put in the spreadsheets and, and it's a lot of man hours um, especially due to events MMA we're pretty experienced at this point uh, so I got Melanie, uh, Randy, and his crew over in Portland, and we're gonna be here till about three, four o'clock, and then take off and you know get the fights done. Uh, tomorrow we have the fun job of you know cleaning all this up. So uh, a lot goes into two events. It's you know I don't want to take up too much time and explain every boring detail, but uh, you know it's definitely uh, difficult to, to do that. Got Scoop coming. Got a business meeting first. But before that, we're gonna go home. I gotta take a shower because I kind of stink. And uh, let my dog out. We gotta fill in that part. So Scoot's my left hand man. He gets, you know, gets things done. And now no, he's actually both my left and right hand. Bodyguard. Bodyguard. He carries my beard because I can't grow one. The enforcer. Oh, they're all good there, Scoop. 
Yep, good to go. Jim was uh, spotting, so I told those guys, I told Linda. They're good to go, though. Desk, everything, they got the keys, so they're all, should be all set. All right. They're on their own. It's off to Gladius. Gladius 11. Yeah, we can't do that next time. It was just moving so fast. Yeah. Yeah, it just moves too quick, you know, especially with so many lifters, you got to get them. You got to do three platforms, too, you know. If you do three platforms, it cuts the time way down. I mean, they, they'll probably be there till what, 9, 10? Yeah. I mean, he was hoping to get out 7, but that, that definitely is No. Were they even halfway done? Yeah. Oh, okay. Started clearing out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he knows. I told Pat and Tim. Yep. Checking in for medical. Checking in for medical. So maybe Tim told him, hey, go check in, do everything you need to do. You never know. Right. Yeah, I don't know if you want to break it to him or. I'll just break it to him. I mean, I'll bring it again. I'll wait until it's possible. Right? Yep, there's always a possibility. I guess, you know, ask some of the corners, like, hey, anybody want a last minute fight? Yeah. Uh, I'm leaving right now. All right. Bye. Trying to Adam? find a last minute fight for uh, uh, Rhodes. I guess uh, DeSalvo ran into some problems, but uh, he has a fight, he has a fight. If not, then we're down to 16 fights. It's a big card. It's a big card. Good matchups. Should be exciting. Looking forward to Josh Reckless Mayville. He's my favorite fighter right now in upstate New York. He always, uh, always has something interesting to say and you know, he backs it up. So, looking forward to that one. Which one do you want to see, Scoop? Uh, I want to see Mayville, but I want to see how these big boys bang around. I want to see how Tom Connolly does. And uh, Bear. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they've, they've looked good in uh, training sessions, and uh, I like Conley's uh, striking. He's got some pop to him, and, uh, you know, Tyler, he's looked tough during training. He's undefeated, and, you know, he's got good grappling skills. Moves well for a big guy. Yeah, they're both going against two pretty, uh, pretty good-sized opponents, too. Yeah, yeah, they look pretty, uh, pretty athletic, and they got good records. We'll see. We'll see what happens tonight. Uh, hopefully Syracuse comes out on top. You know, we put a lot of time and effort into the team and uh, we came up uh, to our place a bunch of times to train and uh, look good. They really improved over the last, you know, eight to ten weeks. And, uh, you know, the other good thing is, you know, got all the coaches together. You know, we've always been pretty friendly with each other. And, you know, got to do some training and and uh, swap some knowledge. I like to see the progression though, like when they first came to train at our facility and obviously we have some of the guys that work for us and, and all that that are pros. And these guys are on the cusp of wanting to go pro or talking about going pro and how humbled they were the first few sparring sessions, <laughs> <laughs> realizing they didn't quite know all that they thought they knew. So I think this, uh, I think that experience working with them will be good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they got an opportunity to train with a lot of the pro fighters, and you know, obviously they know what it takes to get to that next level. You know, they're teaching some of the younger guys, and you know, those guys will eventually be, you know, good pros. But you know, that's where the the pros started. You know, the, a lot of them were frustrated when they they first started training, and and uh, you know, they're getting to a certain point. A lot of these guys are getting into the bigger shows, Bellator, some of the big local shows. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of cool to see, especially being in it so long. You know, some of these guys from, you know, four or five years ago when they first started training with us, you know, get, getting to that next level and seeing their progression, you know, it's good to see it from, from these guys too.
So I think right now what I'm gonna do is drop Scoot off and uh, you know whatever he needs to do to get ready. I know he checks with a lot of sponsors and you know checks with the commission and you know make sure everything's going all right with uh, Fighter Source. And uh, we gotta head over to a hotel. I'm meeting um, uh, a new guy introduced to Gladius Don Perry. Uh, he's working on a interesting project. I don't want to go too much into it. Uh, it's something that we've been working on for over two years, and uh, it's definitely a unique idea. Um, you know, hopefully our next show we're ready to launch it, and you know, see how it works. I think it's uh, something that the MMA community hasn't seen yet, and uh, you know, so we'll go over there, check it out. I haven't, I haven't got to see see the project yet, but get a little sneak peek into it. I'll probably go in, touch base with Ms. Uh, Mel, kind of see what logistics uh, we got to figure out. Make sure, just like we did at the powerlifting, that we got a good flow to everything. Uh, we make sure that all of our pro shop stuff set up. Uh, you know, soak gear, all that good stuff. Uh, check in with the announcer. I have the uh, announcer cards for uh, sponsorships that we get for our promotion. Um, that way they get their shout outs during the uh, matches. Check in, uh, make sure our VIP section's all squared away. A lot of our sponsors sit there, so we'll go around, touch base with all them, make sure everything's all right, make sure they're thanked for uh, their support. It's not that easy to get people to sponsor events like this. Um, and we do a variety of sponsorships the way we do it, so uh, you know, it helps us put on a good show for the crowd, and uh, really helps us, you know, boost our promotion to another level. So it's important that they get a good level of attention. And then, basically, I think I don't know. I think I'm up at the cage, right? Probably. Sure. Whatever. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't know what Fighter Source has tonight. Yeah. Hopefully, this is a, a lot less work on our part um, you know fighter source uh, brings in the production crew the cage and everything so that takes a lot off our plate and you know we're able to do two events in one day um, you know usually you know we we hire the Syracuse uh, UA Syracuse uh, to come down set up the cage uh, we have a production team that comes in so um, you know that's 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 a lot off our plate we have one of our coaches set up the back room, make sure all the fighters are organized, uh, in the proper locker rooms, tapes hand properly, all that good stuff. So there's a lot of a lot of logistics that go into it before people walk in the door that people don't realize that go into uh, you know one of these events. So once you've been through it, like myself, you have a new appreciation for it. And I'm sure a lot of sporting events are like that, but MMA is a little different beast to try to get people there. You know, you got some people for it, some people against it, but uh, you know, we usually get a pretty good turnout at our show, so it shows that the hard work pays off. I like the strategy behind it. Uh, you know, you got to kind of you know put in a venue where there's a lot of fighters, and uh, you know, Cortland's had a rich uh, tradition of, uh, you know, pro fighters coming out of there. That's where I started my first business, uh, Bomb Squad. And uh, we ran it out outside of my back house and in our barn. Uh, we did a lot of, you know, small documentaries on it. And, uh, you know, it's great to kind of come back and, you know, keep that tradition going. It's the first MMA show ever in Cortland. And uh, we partnered up with uh, Randy Smith, who was a uh, long standing bomb squad fighter and uh, you know he's got some guys on the card and he really pushed the event uh, well for us and uh, been all over the newspaper pretty much every day and uh, we had a lot of radio ads blasting I, I expect a, a big draw tonight uh, at, at the door and um, you know to have this uh, event televised there is, is something special
Able to get some other stuff. Oh, okay. So, I'm good to go. All right. Perfect. All right. We're here with uh, Mac, the uh, the matchmaker. It's me, matchmaker extraordinaire. Why don't you Why don't you talk about Fight Club or uh, Fight Club? Fight Church. <laughs> Fight Church. Uh, Fight Church is a documentary film that we just premiered last night in Boston in that independent film festival and it went great. Uh, we've been getting uh, amazing media coverage, exposure for the uh, film thus far, so it's been great. Need two other Brandon Warren yeah. tents. Yep. Yeah. I have them. Okay. Beautiful. The Gladius shirts. Gladius shirts. Uh, they should be. Uh, ask Kevin. Kevin. Black, uh, black shirt. Black. Uh, Six feet, please. Can you do those double doors right there? Okay, gotcha. Turf? Okay. I'm good. Is where they're going to be the, uh, the meeting. Okay, got gotcha. This is your Dana White yeah. follower? Yeah. Oh boy. The yeah. documentor. Yeah. We're good. We're just doing all our pre show stuff, so. Yeah. We'll do our intros in a little bit here. Uh, I wanted to show Primo the first show. Have you watched it yet? Not a chance, man. I watched it. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah